Hi, welcome to this quick how to um, help video on function machines. Function machines generally have uh, a couple of steps. You can get one step function machines. One step function machines, we just have the one box, uh, but it's more common to get two. So I thought I'd do the video on two. There are two main types of questions where you have to either work out the output. So the number that comes out of the machine or you have to work out the input. So the number that would have gone in to make the output that you may have been given. So we're gonna look at both. The function machine itself will be given a couple of operations. So we're gonna to choose to do times two and add four as our function. And I'm, I'll do another one after this, just so you've got a bit of variety. There's just a couple of key things to be very careful of when it comes to a function machine. So if my question said, work out the output when the input is, let's say five, that means five lives here. Yeah, input is five. So five is at that point in my function machine. When I travel across, I'm being very clearly told to times by two. So at this stage, and I'm going to do a different color so it stands out, I've got five, pine, five times two. Five times two is 10. Really important, always work out each stage separately and it's less likely to go wrong. This isn't about bidmus, this is about a number going in, something happening getting a result, something happening, getting a result, okay? So at this stage, I've got 10. I'm gonna add that four to it, and my output is 14. And I could be putting any number in, and I would have to follow those exact same steps. So let me clean this up and just do it with a completely different number so you can see it working. Let's put, um, what should we put in this time? Let's put in seven. If seven's going where the input is, it's going to hit a times by two. Seven times two is 14. It's then going to hit plus four. 14 plus four is 18. So the output is 18 when the input is seven. So it's really important to be listening to that language. The second type of question, which is the kind of opposite way round, this time we're working out the input when we begin with the output. This is the one where people generally trip up if they're going to. So this is the one that we want to be a little bit more careful of. So let's say um, we've got 24 given to us in the question. So work out the input when the output and it's really important that we read it carefully so we know what that number is. 24 is the output. So my 24 is actually living here. So a number I don't know has gone in, it got multiplied by two, it got added four, and it came out as 24. The way that we solve this is we go backwards. Now, for this question, you could probably intuitively work it out and think, oh, I don't need to go backwards. I can see what it is. That's because I've written a fairly straightforward question. If the question was a bit trickier, if the maths was a bit harder, you might not be able to see it. And then you've got to have an approach that you can use that's going to make this work. So we've got 24. Now look at my arrow. It's going in the opposite direction. Because I'm going in the opposite direction, I'm going to be doing the opposite of everything. I'm undoing what must have happened originally. So instead of adding four, I am going to take away four. So I've got 24 and I'm going to take away four. That's going to give me 20. So at this stage, I have 20 going into the machine in this direction, meaning I'm doing the exact opposite of what I can see. I can see times by two, but I must remember to do divide by two. So I've got 20 divided by two, which would give me 10. So what's the input when the output is 24? It is 10. And that is the basics of a function machine. 
function machines, as I say, are generally two step and always opposite signs when you're going in the opposite direction. And the best way to know which direction you're heading in is to do what I did. Yeah, I put the number given to me in the question right by the side of the diagram so that I could see which way I was traveling. So hoping, as usual, <laughs> that this video has been useful and you can uh, get a better, a deeper understanding of how function machines work. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Target Maths video and hopefully we'll be able to help you in the future.